This is 1973, number 10. And the question's asking for the maximum value. So we know maximums occur at critical points or endpoints. Oh, and we want, oh, I should say this. The derivative has a maximum value. So very clearly, we're not taking the maximum of that. We want the maximum of the derivative. So first, let's find the derivative. But to do that, let me rewrite f of x. No, I don't have to, never mind. The derivative of that would be 4x cubed over 3 minus 5x to the fourth over 5. Now, here's the important part. We want the maximum of this. What confuses a lot of people, they say, oh, this is a derivative. I set that equal to zero. But we're not trying to find the maximum of f. We're trying to maximize f prime. So I'm gonna call this a new name. I'm gonna call f prime h. So if I asked you what's the maximum of h, what would you do? You would take the derivative of h to find the critical points. So here's the point. To maximize the derivative, I call h the derivative. I wanna maximize h, so where will that happen? At the critical points? So I take the derivative of h, which is four thirds, and then I bring the three in front and decrease the power by one. And those cancel, and it's gonna be four x cubed. So this will be the threes cancel. So cool. There's the derivative of h. I'm trying to maximize h, which is the derivative of f. Okay, so don't get confused with what you're trying to maximize. So when does this equal zero? I'm gonna factor out a four X, be left with the X minus, whoa, that's a cube there, huh? I messed up, that's a cubed. So I'm gonna factor out a four X squared and that's gonna leave me with one minus X. So my two critical points would be X equals zero and x equals one. So those are my two possible places where the maximum can occur. Now this is confusing me a bit because I am confused, I'll explain. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a chart and get an idea of what's happening because I'm a little perplexed about how this problem is set up. Because normally we need endpoints and critical points, we test them, but we don't have that. So let's take a look at what this graph is doing and it'll probably make more sense. Oh, H prime. Okay, pick, pick values, negative one, one half, and two. Plug in negative one into the derivative. Negative one squared is always positive. That's always positive, that doesn't change. Negative one here, that's gonna be one plus one, which is positive, so it's gonna be positive there. I know where we're going here. My brain is okay again. Let's plug in a half to see what's happening. So one half squared, that's always positive, so that's positive, we don't worry about that. What's one minus a half? That's negative. A positive and a negative give me negative, so I know it's negative there. Then let's plug in two, that's always positive. One minus two is negative. A positive and a negative get me a negative. I am not happy with that. I messed up somewhere, no? I did mess up. I did. Let me go over this again. Let's plug in a half. What's one minus a half? That's positive. And a half squared, that's positive. Positive, positive, positive. Okay, I feel better now. It's positive. positive. Okay, so we only have one relative extrema. Do you all see that? The only relative extrema is at one. And it's a relative max because it goes from positive to negative. So I will say H prime has a relative max at X equal one. And now here's where everything makes sense. You have a theorem that says if a continuous function has only one 
relative extrema, it's also an absolute extrema. So there's an absolute extreme value at x equals one. And that should be the answer C.